Hello and welcome to JSB Talks Digital, the podcast for marketers, digital transformation champions, and those of you bringing your skills into the digital age. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke, and this podcast is brought to you by Digital Training Institute. In this episode, I'm taking you on a journey of exploration. It's time to talk Facebook Messenger chatbots. Coming up in today's show, Facebook reveals video dimensions guide, Google reveals most popular searches, and Twitter enables account sharing in the TweetDeck mobile app. I interview co-founder of Social Day UK about their use of chatbots to launch their 2018 event. In shoutouts, three brilliant Facebook Messenger case studies we can all learn from. In JSB's column, Man vs. Machine, what you need to know about bots. And find out what chatbot tool saved my working week. Social Media News Facebook has released a really useful video requirements guide covering everything from ratio details and length restrictions for Facebook's various video options, including video on Instagram. If marketers are to get the most out of Facebook organic reach, then be sure to adhere to the best practices contained in this guide. You can download your PDF copy on the blog post associated with this podcast. I love finding out the most popular Google searches. As a digital marketer, keyword research is one of my most trusted tactics. Google News Lab, in collaboration with Zaquin GV, an interactive visual data journalist, looked at the top 100 how-tos worldwide to see what we desperately need help with. The new site designed by Zaquin, working with Google and its trends tools, allows users to enter whatever country they want to into a field and then check the top how-to searches for their region. The relative popularity of things around the house people search to fix are represented by larger or smaller graphics in a household scene. In Ireland, for example, it turns out that light bulbs are really commonly searched for, as well as washing machines and toilets. Have some fun and log on to how-to-fix-a-toilet.com to see what how-to questions people are asking in your country. TweetDeck Teams, a feature that lets users share access to Twitter accounts without having to share a password, will now work in the Twitter app for iOS and Android. The change will make it easier for those who run social media accounts for businesses and brands to post updates, check replies, send direct messages and more without having to run a separate app. If anything, however, the move could hint that Twitter is thinking of transitioning TweetDeck's account management feature to its main app, and I think that would be really useful. After all, many of TweetDeck's more advanced features like muting, search and list management already exist on Twitter itself. So it only makes sense that sharing accounts will make their way over there too. Interview. In today's show, I'm delighted to be joined by Social Day UK co-founder and Aviso Media Director Stuart Hall to talk about their use of Facebook Messenger chatbots. Stuart, you're very welcome to JSB Talks Digital. I've had your wife Lucy on the show previously talking about embracing social media without fear. And if you want to listen back to her, Stuart, or indeed my listeners, it's episode number 38. So Stuart, you're on here today to talk about messenger chatbots. So why did you decide to introduce them to your business? Well, firstly, thanks for having me on the show, Joanne. It's great to be here. You're welcome. So chatbots, yeah. I mean, it, it, we've had a love-hate relationship with uh, messenger bots, if I'm honest. Uh, we, we actually first looked at them probably about um, 12, 18 months ago. And our first experience wasn't great, if I'm honest. Uh, we kind of used it more as a customer service tool. Um, running the event, we get lots of inquiries. And we thought this would be the answer to our prayers, especially um, fielding all of the incoming inquiries. However, it didn't really work out like that. And unfortunately, People would ask some really random things, and obviously they'd get this standard message back from us, which was completely out of context. So we actually knocked that on the head pretty quickly. 
we, we left it for a while. And actually, was, I was having a chat with Andrew and Pete, and we were just talking about what, what they had going on, etc. And they've been doing quite a lot of stuff with chatbots. And it just piqued my interest a little bit, especially talking about some of the um, impacts on um, algorithm and, and, and reach and whatnot. So we revisited it. And, and I think really it was just more about doing something at the cutting edge. Uh, we, we started to do live stream for Social Day. And you know when we're marketing Social Day, we really want to make sure that that we're targeting our audience who are digital marketers, you know, so we have to try and do something that um, is a little bit different and, and, you know, can show them what gives them a good example of, of you know, what the day is going to be about. So, you know, we, we, we revisited it and that's, that's kind of where we actually decided to use the chatbot again. So I interacted with Tiny um, and I actually watched the launch of Social Day UK 2018 on Facebook Live I watched the replay because that day I think I was delivering some a training program. So tell my listeners about your approach. I thought it was really clever. While I was totally interested in the event as a marketer, I was actually studying it as a case study. Um, so explain to yeah. the listeners what you did. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it was so we, we'd, we'd had this uh, idea for this year's event to be more of a festival theme. And we wanted to create a character that was the linchpin for all of our marketing um, over the next 12 months. So we came up with this character, Tiny, who, in essence, he's an animated punk uh, who used to be a roadie. Uh, he's a lot cooler than Lucy and I. Um, so, you know, he's really this, I think he's really our alter, alter ego, really. So we created this character and we wanted to bring him a bit more to life. So we decided to actually bring him onto a live stream. So using some software, we managed to um, do a pre-roll video and play it live through the live stream. He introduced not just Lucy, he introduced um, a, a, a pre-roll that we'd done to promote the event. And we were happy with that. But then after the conversation we had about uh, chatbots, we thought, hmm, actually, we could get him to do a bit more here. So we actually we had this research project that we've been working on for the last few months, and we were just about ready to launch the the, the uh, report itself. So we actually incorporated that aspect into it. So we asked our um, the people watching the live and also watching the replay to talk to Tiny, and in return he would actually give them a copy of the research report. I mean, there was plenty of things that, that could have gone wrong. Touch wood, it, it went quite smoothly. But it was really cool to get people to actually engage and comment during the live stream. Um, so, yeah, I think in, in essence, that's, you have to go and watch it to, to sort of really get a good flavour for, for what it was all about. But in, in essence, Tiny was the, the news anchor and, and Lucy was our roving reporter. And what a team they make, I have to say. And you were behind the scenes doing all the technicals. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was the legs of the swan paddling furiously. Well, I have to say, I thought it was brilliant. And so I typed Tiny into the comments box. Tiny appeared in my personal messenger box immediately and said, do you want the 48 page market research report that Social Day UK have compiled? And I was like, yeah, I want it. And um, there I got it, and I was brought straight to the link to the PDF. So um, what has been the feedback from your community with that experiment? Yeah, it's been, I mean, on the whole, it's been really good. And I think, you know, it's quite interesting because we get to see all the dialogue still from um, people interacting with the chatbot. And I can, I can tell you were very polite, Joanne. Was I? Um, <laughs> you know. Oh, my God. I didn't know you were watching. I'm so glad I was polite to tell you. <laughs> Well, I've got um, I've got one of these Amazon Echoes, and I'm always saying uh, please and thank you to Alexa. So I think it's just um, it was just brought up well. Great. <laughs> they think, yeah, see, the feedback's been pretty good, and we've had lots of people ask, you know, how we how we did it, and you know, just for your listeners out there, we actually used a program called ManyChat. It's really easy to use. Um, they've got a free version, they've got a paid version, and they've got bags and bags of material on there to actually help get you set up so it's really easy to go off and experiment so we've also been talking to some of the clients in in the agency about how we can you know perhaps use this 
I think there's still quite a perception out there that um, artificial intelligence and chatbots on the whole are really for customer service. Uh, I don't think people really see it as a, as a genuine marketing tool just yet. And, I, and I, I think it's wrong to assume that. And what were the results for, for the business in terms of engagement, in terms of the number of people accessing the report and maybe anything else that it generated? Was it a useful exercise for you guys? Was it worth it? It's to totally worth it. I mean, there's two counts, really. So the first one is that we actually did the live stream off our Facebook page. Now, the majority of people who've ever tried to live stream off a Facebook page will know that the engagement levels are pretty low, mm -hmm. as opposed to perhaps using uh, your personal accounts. So we actually, having the engagement going on with people interacting in the comments, um, we got a really good reach. Um, I can't remember how many people tuned in uh, at the actual time, but I mean, it, we, we were really happy with it. And, you know, the second element to that is that we wanted... I think we had, to, we had a loose figure of getting about 100 people to download the report. And of course, everybody that downloads the report also had the option uh, of joining our um, subscription list for the chatbot. Um, and, and again, we were pretty pleased with the sign-up. I mean, we had over 100 people um, sign up over the length of the, um, the, the actual content being out there. Uh, it wasn't on the actual day, but I mean, this is like the gift that keeps giving because it, hang, it hangs around a lot longer than a standard piece of content. And of course, when you're getting into somebody's Facebook Messenger, that's an, a unique invitation. And it also says that, well, you know, I really want to hear from your brand and I'm willing for us to continue that conversation. So I think that's getting a deeper level of engagement that perhaps we don't get with other channels. Yeah, completely. And I, mean, I think from... Although I would caveat that and say that this is still fairly new and that you, you've got to be mindful about it. I mean, we're quite lucky because we're dealing with an audience of marketers. So we would hope that they're a bit more uh, receptive to new techniques. But if you're, if you're implementing this for just a general audience, you, know, you have to be mindful that that messenger um, on Facebook is probably personal space, whereas they're probably used to receiving sales material through email. I think we're all, you know, kind of a fay with that now, but, you know, it's still fairly new with with uh, messengers. And, and yeah, you might get that little red dot on, on your phone come up and, you know, the open rates might be really good. But just air caution because you, you don't want to, you know, you want to go and make a good impression and, you know, just ensure that it is, you're giving content that people do want. And perhaps with that really good advice, maybe it's something that they should do and that we all should do and is test it with a small group of our audience and see how receptive they are to it. Yeah, and I, I also would say that um, something I hadn't quite considered when we were coming up with this, um, but it's still an extension of your brand. You know, so I'd say, you know, really test it because whatever your chatbot says, uh, if it's really boring content, if it's too personal, it's the extension of your brand and it really needs to, you know, you've got to get that right. So, yeah, I don't think you could ever do too much testing and get enough feedback. So have you got anything else in mind for Tiny? Obviously, the three-day social media festival, he'll be really busy. But anything leading up to that? Yeah, well, he's, uh, he's back on his holiday shortly. <laughs> um, you know, so we, we basically we're going to be announcing... Uh, all of the speakers that are coming up. Now, bearing in mind we've got over 30, he's going to be quite busy for a number of weeks. But we've, what we're actually looking at doing is trying to introduce a series of competitions, you know, maybe a bit of guess who. You know, we've got some quite cool ideas of how we can use the chatbot to actually increase engagement. I think one of, you know, one of the, the most appealing things here is that if you can get it right, if you're using live stream, you know, obviously Facebook are already weighting the algorithm in favor of that. If you can add, add engagement on top of that as a marketing tool, this is, is, is really, really good because, you know, especially with the chatbot is getting the engagement there. You know, people are adding comments to the feed. You know, people are generally liking it because you've got the, the live stream going on. So any pairing it with any video uh, or any other heavily weighted content, and you know you're on to a real winner, uh, especially for organic reach, which is, is is not easy to come by these days. 
So, yeah, we'll definitely be, you know, doing more of this in the future. We've also got clients talking to us about how we can uh, implement that, even, even down to sort of some of the more basic yeah, utilities and services. You know, we've got um, financial services clients who are looking at using chatbots for Q&As, you know, where we can actually set up some predetermined questions and answers um, obviously have somebody on standby if anything you know comes up that, that unexpected but it's it's really is a good way of getting people in, engaged full stop um, and I think it's come a long way from just being a customer service tool and of course as machine learning and augmented reality um, grows and deepens I guess as marketers there's a responsibility on us to to test what's out there and see how it might work for our clients because we'll probably be the early adopters of of the software yeah t totally and, and again I think about you know obviously there's the uh, GDPR coming in next year for for email and data capture uh, and I'm pretty sure that you know you've just got to be careful when building any form of list even if it's on Facebook uh, because you know you want people to be opted in they need to buy into whatever you're, you're you're producing so i think you know as as marketers you know keep up the the housekeeping you know make sure people are opting in even if it is to uh, a messenger bot and you know just think about the content that's being pushed out there uh, again you know if you're going to send any content out there you know your first impressions count and you know you want to build a relationship up with with the audience you know you've you've, you've come up with a great idea to capture this this information in the first place don't throw it all away by you know sending them out something that's just salesy you know just be really mindful of how new the technology is and actually where that that message is going which is going to be you know probably quite intrusive in many cases because it's going into somebody's personal messenger box so i think we have got a responsibility as marketers to to respect that great advice Stuart. and um i look forward to hearing from tiny again i think we've uh, had a good start and we will have more conversations and um, for my listeners if you're thinking about a social media conference to go to in 2018 i mean how about going to a social media festival i mean it sounds awesome music maybe beer um, and some great social media advice and um, Stuart, and also to to lucy well done on the continued work that you do on social media uk you, you run a business as well um, and it's not easy to take on a, a challenge like that. So for anybody interested to hear more about Social Media Day UK, you can find them on Facebook, Social Day UK. Um, their website is socialday.co.uk. They're also on Twitter uh, at social underscore day and Instagram, Social Day UK. Stuart Hall, pleasure as always. Thanks for joining me on JSB Talks Digital. Thank you for having me. Shoutouts. In this part of the show, I give shoutouts to brands, organisations or individuals whose work online is remarkable and worth talking about. In this week's show, I'm sharing three Facebook Messenger chatbot case studies that we can all learn from. One. Andrew and Pete are a digital marketing duo from the UK. They describe themselves as the Madonna and Bono of marketing. I can't wait to have them on this podcast very soon to discuss the launch of their first book, The Hippo Campus. The guys use Messenger Chatbot very creatively to increase engagement on their weekly vlogs and blogs. So I get their weekly content into my Messenger inbox and I love the reminders because it gives me a direct link to their YouTube channel and also to their website. Two. BeLive.tv is a live streaming app which allows you to host interviews on Facebook, on pages and groups, while moderating comments in real time. You can use the app on desktop or on mobile. You can go live in two different formats, a Q&A format, which is just you broadcasting to your audience, or you can host a face-to-face -face interview in various styles, split screen, or one of you hogging the camera. I'm a BeLive.tv paid user and I get chatbot messages to notify me of live streaming tips from their collaborator, Molly Mahoney. I really like the notification and getting the link in Messenger. Plus, I can go back and watch it at a later date. Three. 
Did you know that you can request a ride with Uber using their chatbot? It also provides status updates on the location of your driver. In addition, Uber's integration allows users to request rides from within their Facebook Messenger conversation with other users by clicking on an address. I have links and screenshots of all these case studies on the blog post associated with this podcast over at digitaltraining.ie. JSB's column. In today's column, I discuss virtual robots, more commonly known as bots. So it's now man versus machine in social media, and we all need to come up to speed on artificial intelligence in marketing. If you're not bothered about bots, I'm hopefully going to open your mind and change it, maybe by the end of the show. Did you know that more than 100,000 bots chat to and help people out through Facebook Messenger every day? There are now over 1 billion people using Messenger, and it presents marketers with a valuable opportunity to develop deeper relationships with prospects and with customers. Google is also getting in on the chatbot craze. It has developed a new service called Chatbase, which provides analytics and suggestions for how to fix bot experiences to make them better for users. After all, marketers are in the business of serving the customer first. In recent years, social bots have infiltrated social media. Some reports claim that about 7 to 10% of Twitter's user base of over 300 million users are actually bots and over 24 million Instagram accounts could be spam bots created in online black markets. These bots or computer programs take on the persona of a user in social media and they post content on various platforms. In some cases, they're simple computer programs that post content with the intention of making certain hashtags, keywords or user handles trend or they are programmed to latch on to a trending hashtag to increase the visibility of their profile among the user community that is tracking a trending hashtag. So as marketers, we need to be really careful about accounts that have high output but no personality. In other cases, bots are designed to simply to drive traffic to particular URLs that are included in the post. And this is what my case study brands, Andrew and Pete, and BeLive.tv are doing very well. Messenger platforms are growing rapidly, and open rates are proving to be much higher than email open rates. So the click-through rate is also going to be higher. So what do you want a bot to do for you if you're thinking about setting one up? Consumers will engage with bots in three ways. One, content consumption. Two, customer service, and then three, productivity or transactional engagements. If you're going to set up a chatbot, think about the brand, think about the customer, and think about what value that bot is going to add to that relationship. I'm currently working on building the Digital Training Institute Messenger Chatbot, so watch out for more there over on Facebook. If you want to discuss your chatbot strategy, then get in touch. Simply drop me an email to joanne at digitaltraining.ie. Social media of the week. The social media tool that saved my working week this week is ManyChat. ManyChat is an easy to use tool if you are setting up your very first messenger chatbot. Just a couple of button clicks like the one below that you will see on the blog post associated with this podcast and your page is already connected. When you're finished with this step and you get redirected to ManyChat, you only have to choose which page you want to connect your bot to and it's already set up. But this is where you need to get clever. You need to think about the sequence of conversations that you want to have with your customers. This takes planning and probably a bit of trial and error. Some of the features of ManyChat are messages, growth tools, sequencing, broadcasts, auto postings, text, images, cards, galleries, lists, audio, video, and also user input. If you want to learn more about ManyChat, log on to their website, manychat.com, but I do advise you're going to have to play around with it a little bit to get it right.
Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of JSB Talks Digital. I hope you understand a bit more about chatbots by tuning in. To ensure you never miss a show, please subscribe on your smartphone. We're on iTunes, Stitcher and on SoundCloud. And as always, I have all the show notes over on the blog at digitaltraining.ie. Don't forget to send me your questions for Ask JSB to digitaltraininginstitute.ie forward slash Ask JSB. I also love feedback and you'll catch me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. So at Tweets by JSB, JSB Grams or JSB Snap. I'm Joanne Sweeney Burke. This is JSB Talks Digital. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you soon. JSB Talks Digital. Digital.